We head now to one of the busiest buildings in central Auckland and the fact it hasn't had a warrant of fitness for 435 days and has been allowed to remain open throughout that period despite Auckland Council formally acknowledging it was a fire risk. In the background to this story, the building's owner is being taken to court over large amounts of disputed bills. Now, we reported on this earlier this year and we wanted to see what's changed since then. This is a major building in the heart of our largest city. This special report from Zach Fleming. This is the building we're talking about, Skyworld on Auckland's Queen Street. Aucklanders, you probably know it. You've probably been inside it. For those of you outside Auckland, it's a multi-storey entertainment complex, one of New Zealand's biggest, nestled between Aotea Square and the Civic Theatre. It houses movie theatres, including New Zealand's only IMAX, a bowling alley, food court, games arcade, among other things. The building had been so neglected, Auckland Council considered it to be dangerous. Human smoke detectors had to be used in lieu of a fire safety system. That dangerous building notice has been lifted, but tonight Checkpoint can reveal that the building still doesn't have a warrant of fitness. Skyworld hasn't had one for 435 days. A normal day, a Skyworld building in the middle of Auckland CBD. A bowling alley, mini golf, games arcade, mirror maze, food court, multiple movie theatres. More than two million people visit each year. But the building hasn't been fire compliant for years. Not since at least 2014. Issues have included faulty smoke alarms, smoke detectors, smoke extractor fans, evacuation systems. The list is exhaustive. As recently as September last year, an investigation by fire protection company First Fire found 60 defects, 37 of them critical. From what I know of that building, I don't know that there is anyone in our industry that could put their hand on their heart and say that that building should have public inside it at any time. Calvin Clapperton worked for Skyworld's owner as a project manager from December 2014 to August 2016. The owner is a company named J&J Holdings. It paid $37 million for Skyworld in June 2011. A man named James Quack is J&J Holdings' sole director. James Quack owns six companies. Pig Corporation, National Holdings, J&J Holdings, J&J Management, J&J Investment, and N. Izakaya in Tipanyaki. Mr Clapperton's assessment of Skyworld being unsafe is backed up by Auckland Council in an internal email from last October. There is high risk involved for the occupants of the building. And two of New Zealand's largest fire protection companies have also echoed Mr Clapperton's assessment, as shown in emails released by Auckland Council to Checkpoint under the Local Government Official Information Act. Argus Fire Systems wrote to the council in June last year to say they deemed it a dangerous building. Soon after, they stopped working on the building because... It's been an ongoing issue getting approval to carry out any of the required works. And... We've struggled with receiving payment. More on those payment issues later. But after Argus walked away, another fire protection company got involved. First Fire. An email from them in October last year reads... Have had experts to cite for their input and pricing. They were staggered by what they saw and questioned how the site could have ever been deemed compliant in its current state. Mark Bishop, Managing Director of First Fire, elaborated on the phone earlier this week. The problem simply came down to not enough money had been spent on the building to maintain it. Um, and from what we found when we arrived on site, it hadn't been in a compliant state for an extended period of time. The name of the October email sender was withheld by Auckland Council for privacy reasons. But they continued. I believe Council are aware of the issues on site and I'm surprised they have not taken action to protect themselves against liability should an incident occur. And they went on to question whether James Quack was life safety centred or dollar driven. If it was the latter... Then I suggest we all withdraw and Council shut the building down. Here's Kelvin Clapperton on James Quack. He doesn't believe he needs to comply with legislation in New Zealand. And that doesn't only apply to the building and construction legislation, that's employment law and virtually every other law. The reason First Fire wondered how Skyworld could ever be deemed compliant is because the building was given a warrant of fitness last year. But Auckland Council knew it wasn't compliant. They issued that warrant of fitness based on a promise. 
James Quack signed a letter committing to fixing the issues. But there was no deadline set and the issues were never fixed. Council emails repeatedly acknowledge no action was taken between 2014 and late 2016. But Auckland Council didn't revoke that warrant of fitness. Remember that October 2016 email? There is high risk involved for the occupants of the building. High risk. And this was just four months after at least 68 people died in the Greenfell Tower fire in London, a building where safety issues had been raised extensively beforehand, similar to how fire safety issues have been raised extensively about Skyworld. So why did Auckland Council let one of the busiest buildings in Auckland stay open, despite it being a high fire risk? We've, we're dealing with a building owner who's been making um, incremental changes um, uh, over a period of time. and He wasn't really making incremental changes though really, was he? I mean, incremental changes but uh, very slow and I think been making the signals that, uh, that he was um, fully engaged and motivated to uh, get, get things resolved and uh, certainly progress was slow. Auckland Council's General Manager for Building Consents, Ian McCormick, says that's the most difficult position for council to be in. The hardest situation is where they're actually going, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yep, I'm doing it now. Look, I'm doing these things, you know, and I'm doing this a little bit extra bit, and yep, I'm doing that. That's the hardest situation because it's, it's like a continuum. At what point are you actually going to say, oh, I've had enough of this, and you're going to step in? In the case of James Quack and his Skyworld building, it took years for Auckland Council to say they'd had enough. At the end of 2016, the council designated Skyworld a dangerous building, but even then they tried to keep that secret. An internal council email sent from building compliance to communications staff said, A notice has been attached to the building, discreetly placed at the rear entrance. Discreetly. One of the busiest buildings in Auckland was deemed dangerous, and Auckland council staff were worried about being discreet about it. A flurry of emails show communication staff discussing what to say if any media inquire about the dangerous building notice. Does this look okay as a holding statement? We need to be prepared for questions. Please edit if any changes need to be made. But it wasn't reported on until six months later in June on Checkpoint. It's not clear whether or not that's a result of the discreet placement of the dangerous building notice. For Skyworld to stay open with the dangerous building notice, Auckland Council demanded human smoke detectors stand guard in the food court and movie theatres. That cost James Quack $15,000 a day. And on top of that, the council threatened legal action. Suddenly, things started to get fixed. The fire alarms in the movie theatres, for example, took just three weeks. I asked Mr McCormick if issuing warrants on promises, as the council did last year for Skyworld, is common practice. Uh, I wouldn't have thought so. Do you think that that is acceptable for that to happen? I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I... He refused to answer that question. Skyworld hasn't been issued a warrant of fitness on time since James Quack bought it. It still doesn't have one, but it's never been shut down. Checkpoint has spent the past month trying to contact James Quack. I visited his home in Albany, a two-minute walk from the North Shore golf course complete with tennis court and CCTV cameras. All the blinds were drawn, nobody answered the door. I called his assistant Sarah outside because she'd promised to forward on James Quack's phone number the day before. I can text you um, the number you need to call. Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. She never texted me. I emailed James Quack directly several times. He never replied. I visited his offices four times. Each time I was told he was out. OK, I'll ask them and then um, find out some more details and then get back to you. OK, you'll give me a call back? Um, yeah, OK. You, you promise? <laughs> All right. That's Min. She works for James Quack. She never called me back. I never expected her to. Nobody ever does when the question is, how do I make an appointment to see James Quack? Uh, I'll get someone to call you to see if that's OK. Do you have a card? That's Martin. He also works for James Quack. He thought it was funny I was even trying. On another attempt, I saw a man fitting James Quack's description leaving his offices. I'd never met James Quack, so I didn't know what he looked like. 
I asked the man if his name was James. Why you ask me? I'm Zach Fleming from Radio New Zealand. Is I, it? I'm James. Hello? Hello? I'm just in a visiting there. I showed Calvin Clapperton and another man who worked for James Quack that footage. They both said, without a doubt, that was James Quack. It's not clear why he said his name wasn't James and that he was just visiting. But even representatives from Auckland Council have said it's difficult, bordering on impossible, to contact James Quack. And emails from Compliance Consulting show he wasn't even contactable by tenants in his building. An unnamed staffer at Compliance Consulting sent several emails to Auckland Council asking for updates because the tenants couldn't get a hold of James Quack. Apart from his nationality, Korean, little's known because nobody close to him will speak to the media. What we do know is that he's currently involved in several court cases over unpaid bills. Commonly known that he doesn't pay his bills. Um, also that he just doesn't keep his word either. Calvin Clapperton says based on his knowledge of Mr Quack's business when he left a year ago, the total amount of unpaid bills could be in the millions. He's begun testifying in court cases for people seeking overdue payments for work they did for Mr Quack. I personally have been involved in three court cases and one determination, uh, all of which to date have been successful in recovering the money or achieving a determination. Why have you said yes to helping those people out? Uh, it's wrong. Uh, what this man is doing in our country is, is just not right. At a recent case in the Pukekohe District Court, Mr Clapperton says James Quack noticed him inside a meeting room. He approached the door which had a, uh, a window pane in it and made a gesture much like a pistol pointing to his um, temple and said, you're an effing idiot, you're dead. And then stood there staring at me in the witness of his own team and also the person who called me as a witness. And then later approached the window again and made a slashing, uh, throat-cutting gesture. And again said, you're dead. Mr Clapperton says that left him shaking and scared. He says he's since filed a complaint with the police. And I believe they're investigating at the present time, CCT footage and uh, witness statements, so forth. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have made the complaint if I didn't think he was serious. And that's primarily because I think he knows that I could appear as a witness in dozens, if not over a hundred cases, where he hasn't paid or he's done something illegal. The police have refused to confirm to Checkpoint whether they're investigating the case. But Mr Clapperton says he'll continue to testify for people wanting money from James Quack. I'll keep providing um, testimony until that building is sorted. It's not a personal thing with James Quack, uh, it's just that I don't believe on heart of hearts that uh, that building should ever allow a member of the public in it the way it's uh, set up at the moment. I asked Ian McCormick if his building consent team has enough power to force people like James Quack to do the right thing and make their buildings safe. Enforcement tools always seem to be an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. I mean, I'd much rather have a way of actually making building owners um, realise if they don't, um, you know, respond that they're going to um, suffer consequences. But as yet, James Quack has not been fined or prosecuted by Auckland Council for his consistent failure to make Skyworld fire safe. For Checkpoint, Zach Fleming. And the cameraman was Bradley White. Restaurant brands and event cinemas who are tenants, and we want to stress that at Skyworld, were aware of the fire issues but refused to comment for Zach's story.